So what do you do? Does that question strike fear in your heart? Does the idea of attending a networking event, such as it may be these days, make you feel just a bit queasy inside because you know people are going to ask you? You know you're going to ask them, and they're going to have such wonderful, pithy, creative ways to describe their business. While your answers sound like you are none of those things. In fact, you sound like you are slightly questioning what it is you actually do when you tell them. Do you find yourself changing your idea of what your elevator pitch is? The words you use, even mid-explanation? Stick around because I have some ideas on how to help you tighten that up so you sound not only like you know what you're doing, but they should really be questioning themselves as to why they even had to ask. Hey, I'm Janice, and welcome to another episode of Connections, Coffee, and Confidence. Those are the three things I think are critical to every successful entrepreneur. So grab a cup of your favorite brew, and let's get into today's episode. Hey, before I jump into today's episode, I was wondering if you'd seen my new guide. It's called Five Unique Ideas for Social Media Posts, and it's yours if you go to janicefogarty.com. It's that simple. So if you've wondered about what you're going to post or wished you had some new ideas to post about, you really want to go download my guide. With the prompts I provide you, you'll have over a month's worth of social media posts for all of your different accounts. So check out my page at janicefogarty.com. I'll link to it in my show notes. You can go download your guide and never sweat about doing your social media posts again. That's right, never, because you can reuse these ideas with a different spin until you quit social media. You are welcome. Have you read Donald Miller's book, Story Brand, yet? Because you should. You just should. Okay, so thanks for joining me today. I'll link to the book in the show notes, and I'll talk to you again, same time, next week. Okay, seriously though, I could begin and end this episode with just that piece of advice and consider my job done. That book is a super easy read, and when you get to the end, you realize you have just taken in the most amazing amount of information, delivered in a really delightful way. I'll link to it in my show notes, because I agree with pretty much everything Mr. Miller has to say, and he says it differently than I do and his way might resonate better with you than my musings. Also, as his vehicle is a book, and mine is a 15-minute podcast, you're going to get a more detailed understanding from him. So if this is a topic that you would really like to dig deeper into, that's where I'm going to point you. After, of course, this podcast. Now today, I'm not going to recount his points on storytelling and business as a whole, You need to just go read his book. However, I will run down on what I have done for crafting an elevator pitch for myself, even before Mr. Miller validated my approach. First, let me take you way back in time. Back when I was in university. You see, we'd have to practice writing a new story with a certain amount of words and a deadline. The phrases, tighten your copy, and too wordy were often bandied about in regards to my stories. Let's just say I excelled at feature writing, which is different to news writing. So when I began actually working for myself, I froze just that little bit because I have never told a short story in my life. I had a little cringe inside of my heart when I realized I'd have to answer that dreaded question. So what do you do? And not sound like an idiot. Or monopolize the person's time, while I explained everything in great detail, or provide a three-word answer that chased them away out of boredom. Hot tip, when a person's eyes glaze over or they have a puzzled expression when you're finished, you need to work on your elevator pitch. Back to Mr. Miller for a moment, because storytelling is actually a brilliant way to make an impact on your potential customer. Whenever you help a person identify with you, your product, or your service, You're creating a relationship that hopefully ends in a referral or a sale. He says, 
People do not buy the best products. They buy the ones they can understand the fastest. He also says, people do not follow the best leaders. They follow the ones they can understand the easiest. Hmm. It sounds to me like Mr. Miller is making a case for an excellent elevator pitch. Oh, guys, you know what I mean by an elevator pitch, right? So-called because you should be able to explain your business during the time it takes to ride a floor or two in an elevator. I think a creative excuse for my lack of succinct pitch would be because I had very little experience in elevators. I grew up in small, tiny towns in rural Nova Scotia. Frankly, I don't think I have the skill level to sell that, though. So where do you begin? I'd start by knowing your niche or your focus. Who do you sell to? Who do you work with or for? Look at who's been keeping your client base rolling. What's their common denominator? Are you looking at easing into a new market or just starting up with really no clients to speak of yet? If so, think about who you want to see on your customer list. How would you describe them as a group? And what do you do for these people? Do you offer a service, an experience, a product? Are you digital, brick and mortar? Are you specialized? Are you highly educated or experienced? What's the intended outcome for your client or customer? Do you expect them to be able to create their own elevator pitch? Or hand stencil their work from home desk? Or have a piece of handcrafted furniture that fits their home and lifestyle as well as their bottom? These are all interesting things that can help paint a picture of what you do to someone you've just met. And if you've listened to me before today, this should hopefully be reasonably easy because it's the basis of, well, everything you do. And this is not my first time talking about it. Now, if this is your first podcast, welcome and thank you for joining me. Irrespective, if you haven't gotten really clear on this, now is the time. And I'd love to tell you that your elevator pitch is so much more complicated than that, but it's not. That's the bones of it. So if it's that simple to describe, why is it so hard to come up with a good one? Oh, oh, I hear you. I hear you chatty loves like me. And I hear those of you who really only have a two or three word description that hits the high point, like I'm a hairdresser and you're done. One thing that makes an elevator pitch a good one is to be clear. If you confuse, you lose. That's also Mr. Miller, by the way. It's nice to use jargon or industry terms if you're talking to someone in your industry. However, if you just met someone and you've gotten to chatting, You need to be able to clearly say who you work with and what you do, what the end result is, in words everyone can understand. Don't say, I'm a tonsorial artist specializing in assisting metrosexuals and refining their coif aesthetic. That right there, that's a shortcut to an eye glaze and a walk away if I ever heard one. Try saying, I'm a barber and I specialize in men who want to look more Gucci than grandpa. It's still a little snazzy, but it's clear enough so that everyone will have an idea that you cut men's hair who are interested in personal style. The little bit of alliteration and the descriptors show you have personality. Always a sweet bonus. It's not hugely wordy. It's uh, what they might call fairly tight copy. And I won't lie, I had to edit that down from my original pitch statement. And that's okay. First of all, no one is perfect on the first try. And second, it's not real. I am not a barber. It is out of my zone of reference, so I had to think about it. I had to play with it. And if you're starting out, don't worry about being perfect on the first try or the second. Which brings me to evolution. What you start out with is not necessarily what you're going to keep forever. Very little in life stays the same. Your elevator pitch, that's no different. I started out with something kind of (laughs) long, no surprise, and kind of rambling about a podcast for women entrepreneurs who need to die. Jeez, you know what? I don't even remember. Because true to form, I rewrote and rewrote and edited and reformulated it to what I have today, which is I help women who love their business, but not so much the PR marketing management side, feel confident. And that's it. I'm still working on it. I find it difficult to believe in myself to find good strong words that describe what I do 
and that slows me down. Note, it does not stop me. I'm in business. You can send me an email and request we work together. I am very happy to connect. Progress over perfection, my friends. My lack of an amazing elevator pitch slows, but does not stop me. I'm also still relatively new to officially embracing my passion for helping others as a job. And I can't believe people pay me to do what I really freaking love to do and talk about. So I tend to wander down a rabbit hole of gratitude and wonder when trying to work on my own business. Wandering and rabbit holes are not awesome for productivity, guys. Something else you need in order to pull off your elevator pitch is confidence. You can be clear and concise, but if you say it with a trembling smile or you're unable to make eye contact, you aren't going to make a stellar impression. You need to believe in yourself and what you're doing that you can and are making a difference. Ramp up the Lego song in your head before you open your mouth. Google it if you don't know what I'm talking about, because unless you have a heart of stone, you cannot help but take some smiles and positivity from it. Say your pitch like you believe it, and if it doesn't roll off the tongue, don't worry about it. Laugh it off as a work in progress. Everyone is a work in progress and appreciates authenticity. Just make sure you don't trip over yourself the rest of the conversation and make a mental note to revise your pitch the next day. Practice it. Roll it over in your head until it sounds good, until you can comfortably say it out loud to yourself or your dog or whoever. Try it out on your support network and get some feedback. There are courses, events, weekends, competitions, and traditions of storytelling. I lived in Ireland for almost 11 years, and I was just amazed at how the oral tradition there really translated into business as well as the rest of life. I loved it. Storytelling can create your award-winning marketing materials, an identifiable brand, not to mention customer loyalty. And all of it can begin with a good elevator pitch. In essence, your story told in a sentence. Try the tips I've given you and the next time you get asked, You can pull your beautifully crafted pitch out of your bag and present it like the pro you are. Hey, thank you so much for listening today. And if you like what you heard, I'd love if you could hit the subscribe button and leave me a positive review wherever you're listening. It doesn't cost you anything but an extra minute of time, but it means a lot to me. And if you really like what you're learning, head to JaniceFogarty.com and sign up for my weekly email. You'll be the first to know about the new episodes and the other plans I'm working on. So make sure to meet me, same time, same place, next week. Until then, stay safe and thank you so much.